is Tuesday, uh, July 7th, and this is your Tracy Tuesdays talk uh, for our check-in for St. Thomas United Church. So welcome. Um, I'm going to start with a text for a mood that AHS has, uh, that I've signed up for, and this one was so great. It says, there are two days in a week we should not worry about, yesterday and tomorrow. That leaves today. Live for today. So first and foremost, we have had many conversations about mini donuts ever since Justin said that he misses mini donuts. And so I have an update. There are indeed mini donuts available at Bear's Paw Farmer's Market. And also as well, the Calgary Stampede has a drive through mini donut location at the Stampede grounds this week, um, where you, if you pre-purchase uh, two dozen mini donuts, you will get two free admission tickets to sneak a peek next Stampede. So I'm going to post the link in the Tuesday email um, for that as well. But anyone that's at Bears Paw Farmer's Market, you can get them there as well. So we uh, did our first Zoom chat and Zoom coffee talk after the service on Sunday, which was great. So we're going to continue to do that. So um, if anyone is interested, we meet on Zoom around 9.45 in the morning, and then we watch the service at 10, and then you stay on, and we do a little check-in and a little chat chit chat afterwards and so if you'd like to participate we have set up a special email uh, you will email to coffee-chat at stthomasunited.ca I will post that as well in the email and we will forward you zoom details and um, on Friday afternoons and if you'd like to be kept on the interested list kind of in an indefinite way so that you don't have to ask for uh, in you don't have to send an email every week. Um, please indicate that in your email. Um, the, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about today is, um, you know, we're in a time, we keep talking about this pandemic time that we're in, and we keep um, struggling uh, with this new reality um, that seems to be uh, becoming a permanent reality. Who knows? Um, and so we grieve for that and we mourn lots of things during that time. And so we have in our next uh, bulletin, there will be a prayer that will be included from one of our congregants. And I want to read it to you today because I, I did respond to the congregant and I said, um, here are some things that may be of help. And he suggested that it could be of help for other people as well. So this is it. So the prayer that he wrote is, Dear God, I come before you today filled with fear, concern, doubt, and sadness. I fear that heavy rains may lead to another devastating flood. I have concern for people suffering through a terrible plague with all of its implications for safety, security, and loss of life. The severity of these events and their consequences is testing my faith and my own weakness in the face of that test fills me with sadness and a sense of fathomless loss. The crux of the problem is the merging of many negative forces on our lives at this time in history. My faith, while still strong, has taken a direct hit in the face of these calamities. Your people need relief from this pandemic worldwide and more locally from the incessant rain too. I implore you to give us all respite from these problems and show that your everlasting love for your people is still strong. Deliver us from this disastrous disease and dry up the heavens to provide succor to your faithful, succor to your faithful. So many of us have suffered incalculable pain and loss. Restore our faith and keep us strong in your love. We ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So the awful things that are happening in our world today, the climate, the plague, the continued hate and racism, etc., on and on and on, definitely makes us cry out to God for answers and help. And I can fully understand your questioning God's love for us, if God is allow if God is the one that's allowing all this to happen. And therein lies the problem, right? If we believe in a God that is love, why would these horrible things be happening? I think the real test of our faith is the belief of an interventionist God. That belief is what truly disappoints and tests our faith in times of calamity and challenge. And that's why many of us have moved away from the idea, idea of an interventionist God to a God that journeys with us through the good and the bad, not being able to change any outcome or any hardship, but rather to be with, 
and help through. Because the reality is that bad things happen all the time, and that will never change. And that has nothing to do with God. That's just life as a human being here on earth. Where God comes into the picture is the, con the comforting hug, the encouraging words, and the helping hand. God isn't responsible for natural disasters, and God isn't responsible for the death of our loved ones. God is responsible be for being on those journeys with us, unconditionally loving us through it all, weeping with us when we weep, celebrating with us in times of joy. So I hope that that gives you some hope in, our own, in your own faith. God isn't responsible for racism or excessive rain or plagues. Unfortunately, most of that is our own doing. God is responsible for being with us and all of us on all our journeys through people who love and care for us. So I'm going to end today with a, a, a prayer that Nadia Boltz Weber, she's a pastor in the Lutheran Church, um, prayed on Sunday. And so this is this is to give you some hope and give you some uh, some yeah some strength and some comfort for the week. Dear God, everyone's exhausted right now. Parents activists, cashiers, people who are just at now actually learning about systemic racism, delivery drivers, the unemployed, the chronically sick, ER nurses, those who fear the police, the elderly, performers with no hope of an audience anytime soon, clergy, social workers, those who can't make their rent, and everyone who has to spray something down with disinfectant for the thousandths, thousandths time. Teach us to rest, Creator. Help us to dial back our obsession with productivity. Raise up more helpers for those who are overextended, God. Stir up the desire to serve in those who only take. Remove barriers to napping. Quiet babies for an hour so those new mamas can sleep. And papas. Make us aware of any new binge-able binge Netflix shows that might help. Give employers the will to grant extra paid mental health days. Quiet those voices that tell us we should be doing more right now, especially the ones that come from inside of us. Teach us not to confuse respite with laziness. Increase our compassion for one another. And while you're at it, increase our compassion for ourselves. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.